Hello there, Internet. I hope you're receiving the pixels of me that are being beamed out over something. At this point, it's a coin flip. But hi, and all you linear heads, too. Huh? That's still a medium. Anybody? Doesn't matter. I'm Kevin Pereira, and this is Attack of the Show, The Loop. There we are. I see you. Uh, again, for the linear heads, I'm sorry. Uh, time shifting. I know time is a construct, but I'm not going to be able to engage with you. But for the folks on the interwebs, I see your frantic scrolls of chat. I recognize you. You are seen. And if you want to ask a question at any point throughout this crazy endeavor as we launch this G4 mothership, exclamation point Q followed by some text. Please try to keep it safe for broadcast. <laughs> That'll put it in the queue. Uh, I am Kevin Pereira. I am largely irrelevant, as you all know. The reason for the season is my guest. And in case you're wondering who they are, I will let you know that they are the reason there was an astronaut cat DJing three hours of a launch special last night. Take a look. For nearly two decades, Adam Savage has pushed the limits of curiosity and creativity they spent three across hours in the pop suit. culture. They spent three you hours in the Adam suit. They know Adam as the host of Mythbusters, the editor in chief of Tested.com, the author of Every Tool Is a Hammer, or as IRL No Face. Uh, Whether he's crafting spacesuits no or suits of armor, Adam brings his endless drive for knowledge and exploration to each and every project. So let's get to know the man behind the myth busting today in the loop. That's right, my guest today. Oh, there, let me let me bring him on the best way I know how. Sir, oh God! <laughs> they warned us we were had to be title safe, but they didn't say anything about Adam Savage safe. He's <laughs> lover and a biter. Adam Savage is here, and the internet is going wild. I'm Good sure. Good to see you, man. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We haven't. <laughs> this is how early days it is. Yeah. We don't know if we're allowed to interact in a studio. Oh, we sure. don't know if applause is warranted. Certainly not for anything I'm ever going to say. But even for a grandiose you know, interview introduction. But like, even a single golf clap in the distance is never not funny. That is the only sign that I know that a performance is being had. I think Seth Meyers made it all okay for everybody. <laughs> the, uh, the internet is exploding in real time over your shoulder, but don't, that, that's, that is chat. We will get to you in, in due time. Right now, it is my chance to chat with you, good sir, and I'm delighted. Thank you uh, for being here on this inaugural event, the Dude. launch of a network, the birth of a something. It's content. I'm honored. Yeah, it, thank you, thank you. I got to meet you not too long ago uh, when I went to visit your your your, your Mad Hatter workshop, <laughs> and uh, you did me a, you you did me dirty, as they say, Adam. It was not it was not a kindness because you opened the door. <laughs> oh, that's right. And I walked in, and we immediately started chatting about projects or whatever else. And then I turn and I realize, like, oh, I just bumped my elbow into uh, I think that was a coin meter from the Matrix movie. Yeah. And then I look this way, and I don't know, is it Alf staring at me? And then I turn this way, and it's the multi-pass from the... Y it was a little overwhelming. It's, it's on purpose. I, I, I need a certain amount of what I call visual cacophony in order to work. Like, I find that relaxing to not be able to sort of parse totally my environment. You can't have signal without the noise. I need the noise, <laughs> and I love bringing people in and drowning them in the noise and, like, using that... It sort of makes people vulnerable. Yeah, oh, I, and, it, and, and I, I busted I, a take, which is not something I've done. Well, uh, arguably, I do it all the time. Right. But I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had to actually say, hey, can we hold for a second? Since I was probably 18 years old, because I was, you did I was real. overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like to me, that also is part of the way in which you bring out the excitement of the place, right? Yeah. Because it's a, it's a palace to celebrate the weird proclivities of things we can't stop paying attention to. I love the notion, though, that some would want blinders or like Zen spa music to focus. And you're like, no, I need sparklers and kaleidoscopes <laughs> in my periphery so that I can be focused on a thing. I think it's I actually think that I have mild ADHD. I think, you know, in the 70s, no one was paying attention. But if they had right. diagnosed me, I would have absolutely been clinical. Uh, Doctors ADHD. were too busy smoking then. <laughs> <laughs> to worry about telling you what your problems are. <laughs> That's why I start every day with little chocolate donuts. That's exactly. <laughs> well, I, I visited you because you were uh, gracious enough to uh, lend your time and talents uh, to the, the, the G4 relaunch yeah. uh, with an exciting build. Uh, and it was, in fact, two spacesuits. Uh, and I apologize because uh, one of them, after your meticulous 
labor of love, yeah. all the thought and care that went into what saffron orange will this suit be, and how will the stitching go, and where will we embroider, and what about the comm system? We stuffed somebody into a cat suit and had him DJ, um, and I hope that's okay. I knew who I was making the suit for. <laughs> <laughs> I had no illusions right. about what was going to happen okay, afterwards. I figured beer stains would be part. You got to know the parcel. customer. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, can it be pressure washed? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is it tear resistant? That's, uh, those are what no, we need to know. Yeah. Not at all. Not even remotely. Um, tell me about the, the project from, from your point of view, please, because. Nope. It, it culminated in a beautiful video, which we'll get to as well, The Beacon, which yeah. your team is incredible from we're start to finish. They've been amazing. But, it, but we're so ecstatic. We've we've been uh, aware of each other and mutual fans for a long time. Yes. And That's kind of you to round up your opinion of me <laughs> to that, of anything I've done. Thank you. I'll take I it. I mean, and we've intersected a few places way sure. back in the day. And you guys, your folks reached out to us early in the summer and said, uh, we'd love to do something to celebrate the launch. Um, is there something you really want to build? Which is just the greatest freaking question to get in the world. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, spacesuits. And I think somebody on my team blanched for a second because they were like, well, of course, we know you want to build spacesuits, but what do you want to build for G4? And I'm like, spacesuits! <laughs> And then we were off to the races. You guys, you love the idea. I've been obsessed with the new Artemis style spacesuits that NASA is currently experimenting with. And it's also because there's a larger uh, 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 di amount of discussion going on culturally about spacesuits and the new suits we will wear. But what people still don't understand is the spacesuit is not a solved problem. Right. It is still really hard to wear one, even with all the advancement of the past 60, 50, some 60 years. Uh, and I wanted to, I own about a dozen replicas of spacesuits, but none of them were like this. The XEMU uh, Artemis style suit is a very particular form factor. And I just was so excited to play. And you guys fomented a month and a half of just pure joy. Well, I'm delighted the ask was, hey, what would you like to build? Not here are our corporate initiatives. <laughs> How can we back into them and reflect our core values exactly. in something that you get to put your name on? Um, when we talk about the iteration of those spacesuits, I mean, how far have we come? I know we have a long way to go. I mean, you have friends with astronauts and they yeah. can tell you that from... Uh, weight management to power to how do I scratch my nose comfortably? All of these are really important issues. And we uh, culturally, we think of spacesuits uh, sort of monolithically. Like we look at the um, we look at the SpaceX suit, we look at the Mercury suit, we look at the EMU suits that they do spacewalks in, and we call all of those spacesuits. Mm -hmm. But they are radically different versions of ways to keep you alive in a vacuum. With very different purposes. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, the Mercury suit, and actually, I would say that the, the Boeing Starliner suit and the SpaceX suit, which are both beautiful looking suits, they're, oh, shit, we lost cabin pressure suits, not let me go see this alien artifact on the moon suits. Right. Right, and not like I just want to casually float in zero-G and have some freeze-dried ice cream suits. Yeah. Like, they're very purpose-built. And the issue with those is when you fill them, they're balloons. And they have some structure, but you still have just as much trouble bending the air inside against its own structure. And so in the big bulky EMU suits you see astronauts do spacewalks in, those have this whole internal structure meant to keep the volume the same no matter how you move. And that's a tremendous amount of engineering oh. and it's still so difficult that many times astronauts do spacewalks, they lose their fingernails from hours and hours of pushing against the inside of the fingertips of the space glove. Yeah. What, is that, what, just to, just to fight it, against if, the if pressure you, if to you, get If to you some... scratched against this table for yeah. hours, your fingernails would eventually fall off. Yeah, it, well, that just happened. Sure, I sure. mean, if we all want to have a... <laughs> If we all want to have a ring cosplay party, for yeah, instance. Right, right. Well, and my, my, my pinky's going first because that nail I always keep an extra inch or two longer. But, <laughs> but yeah. So wait, th that that was really fascinating. That to keep the pressure equal throughout the shoot, the, the suit at all times. That's because if they didn't do that, all that air would be displaced. If I were doing a space flex, yeah, there well, might be too much bulging out air tra trapped in that pocket, and it could pop. Or well, not pop, but it just it's it's resistance. So picture a rubber raft, and sure. then try and bend it in half in your mind. You know you'll meet resistance, and the reason mm. you meet resistance resistance is because in the bending you're making the volume in the raft smaller right and thus you're pressurizing the air and the same thing happens in spacesuits despite all the structure it's still a huge amount of physical labor to operate a balloon from the inside that is the shape of your body 
so when you sit down to design a spacesuit from scratch, yeah. obviously you have your favorite iterations of the suit. Uh, you're a, 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 a cinemaphile, if yeah. I may, mm -hmm. as well. So I, I know you've studied the way those suits look yeah. in, in various pieces of, of, of cinema. But like, what is the process for? Is it an iPad and a, <laughs> is it a, a box of crayons and some construction paper? It's a sketchbook. It, it's yeah. a sketchbook. That's the first thing. I actually did, I think, 30 plus pages of sketches of this suit. Really? And, and it's different parts. It's kind of how the build itself is so large and encompasses so many different parts and pieces and units that I can't wrap my head around it at all. So I just spent weeks just drawing every part I could think about and then troubleshooting how it might fit to the other parts. And it's all just part of the ideation uh, process of, of delivering it. But there was this really neat thing, which is... <clears throat> Almost all the suits I no all the suits I have in my collection are replicas of suits. They're faithful replicas of a certain mm -hmm. type of suit. The suits I'm, I built for you guys, I designed them from scratch. I mean, I followed a form factor of the XEMU suit, which is its identifying feature is that you enter through the backpack. Mm -hmm. But besides that, everything was my call and the spacing and the distribution and everything. So there was this whole process where I got to a certain point in the build and I couldn't proceed until I had a point of view on where the suit was going to go. And so to do that, I had to actually build a narrative for the suits in my head. And the moment that happened, I went from having fun to having just like the most unbelievable blast. So what's the, what is the lore or the backstory behind the suits that, that we got to uh, premiere yesterday? So what I was thinking was when we go to the moon, we go back to the moon in 24, 25, mm -hmm. Um, go back to, that's cute. I'm sorry. I just can't, <laughs> that's fine. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Allegedly we get back there. We're going to build a space station. We're, We're going to have to set station. up some sort of shop. But for the first time in NASA's history, well, sorry, for the first time in NASA's history, we're going to another planetary body not to explore it. Well, partially to explore, but also to establish a foothold. Mm -hmm. And that means we're talking about a fundamentally different way of using suits. And I thought suit form factors are going to change because of that. And I thought, oh, right. So if I'm on the moon and it's like 2030, there's some suits around that are already really old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's definitely going to be what I want to make. Now, if I'm a supervisor on the moon, I'm like, I pictured, you know, I, I got a, a group of folks working for me and they wear suits to work for me. If I'm a supervisor, I'm going to want to look out the window and be able to find them. And so that led me to think, oh, we've never needed a beacon on a spacesuit before, but once you're working on the moon, you will. Because they're going to be like pieces of construction equipment. Right. You had to look at the world through space Bezos eyes yeah. <laughs> and yeah, see exactly. human beings as machines and go, how can I quickly identify the one that's taking too long to pee in the space jar? Well, so Get back to work, 37. I did a little research and I found out that out on the factory floor, they make these light lighting systems so that a supervisor can look and see which machines on the factory floor are working and not working. And I found a, the blue, blue is construction equipment. So I made a little blue strobe yeah. and I attached it to the backpack. And it's the first detail piece I added after finishing the form factor. And before I put the cloth coating on and I put the strobe on and I turned it on and it made me laugh. And I instantly like saw this whole narrative. Um, and to tell a long story as briefly as possible, the worst part about going to, moon, to the moon will be moon dust, which is called regolith. Uh, and actually, yes, because you you talked to me yeah. a little bit about this, and this is this is uh, this is new for the kids on the internet. But we're gonna actually take a break, <gasps> and we come back, we will talk about the terrifying reality that is moon dust. Yeah. Because when you say it, it sounds like a cool EDC party drug. Yeah, like, Ooh. But no, 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 no. You don't want this sprinkled in on or around you. More with Adam Savage and the terrifying reality of moon dust when we come back to the loop. Stay right there. Seriously, stay right there. Don't go. Please don't go.
back yet. <laughs> so my go-to is to just sort of air drum and right. keep it in the pocket because I can feel it. I hear my voice. I see a camera movie moving. I'm going to make the assumption that we are back. Hey there, look at that. What's up, internet, TV, and cell phone screens, and 4D holographic? I don't know. This will be... I got one of those on order. We're probably in the metaverse right now. Yeah, I I don't, or we will be at some point. I don't know. I signed a waiver. The point is, I'm Kevin Pereira. Again, largely irrelevant. This is Attack of the Show Presents The Loop. My guest today is Adam Savage, and we are going to pick up where we last left, yeah. which was about the horrific existence that is Moondust. Moondust, uh, which its official name is Regolith, um, is nasty, nasty stuff. So sand, uh, it, it's akin to sand. It mm -hmm. covers the moon. It's fine. It's powdery. Um, and it's interesting before the first Apollo crew landed on the moon to read NASA's speculation. They didn't know if the ship would just get buried 10 feet in, in this soft dust. They didn't know what they were going to encounter. Well, what they did encounter was... Wait, they didn't, they didn't shoot, they didn't rocket an anvil up there or something they, and let it fall to figure that out or... Do, there's suffice to say there were still questions unanswerable until someone oh. actually stood on it. So oh, when Neil yeah. Armstrong sits down and says, uh, my foot landed on top of it, he's giving direct data that everyone wants to know back home at NASA. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and he's describing how far the regolith comes over the feet of the of the eagle. He's literally giving information that they're like, what's what's it like? What's it like? So how did they fake that in the studio? Was that cornstarch <laughs> and charcoal? <laughs> we can get to, we can talk about that later. So, I, but I I didn't realize, I thought it was he was kind of I, for me because again I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh, watching something I didn't like mean that. I agree with you. I, no, that's <laughs> you'd be foolish not to believe me. Um, but I I would think. That it's almost a nervous excitement that narration sure of okay oh my foot's going i don't know this is uh, but but of course he's a trained professional yeah. he's delivering data in real time absolutely. that is providing tons of context yeah. and information of absolutely course. okay absolutely so um, he's describing that regolith yeah and so uh, look on on earth we have sand everywhere and it, it encompasses it describes many different processes and materials, but ultimately it is small bits uh, that have been worn down by geologic and weather processes. So sand on earth is, if you look at it under a microscope, even fine grain sugar sand mm -hmm. is going to look like round little balls and rocks. Yeah. On the moon, there's no process like that. So what you have is these tiny little bits of dust that if you looked at them in a microscope are like barbed and sharp and have edges and uh, there's nothing to smooth, to unsmoothen them. Uh, and so if that stuff gets on your clothing, as you bend your clothing, it's literally tearing the fibers of your clothing from the inside. This is why Neil Armstrong's suit required millions of dollars in years to resuscitate it, to get as much moon dust out. Because every time you moved it even a little bit, you're just scratching destroying. and scraping. Oh, wow. And so it can get in. It's also uh, frequently uh, it's, gla it's glass like and also has some uh, there's iron ore in there. So there's like it's bad for seals. It's bad for bearings. It's bad for everything you need to do on the moon safely. So what what was the solution to getting that off when they are coming back? Well, they didn't. They, they actually did. They just let it ride. Yeah, they they, they had moon dust in the cabin with them. They were breathing. It's not great uh, for your lungs because yeah. very small amounts. Um, but one of the solutions, one of the solutions that I love is the single entry uh, spacesuit, the XEMU. And the Russians, again, have been, not again, the Russians have been using a rear backpack entry suit for decades. Uh, and it's a very smart design. It's one point of failure. Right. Your build is monolithic. Um, but the feature that I love the most is you can bolt it to the outside of your habitat. And then you no longer need an airlock. You don't, you don't need to put on a suit and step into a big room that is wasted <laughs> just to waste oxygen. Right. You can get into the suit from the hab, have someone close the door behind you and close the secondary door, and then you can just start walking. You're now free. And when it's time to go back in, you back up to the door. Someone opens it up, unclips you, you climb back out into the suit, into the hab, and there's no airlock has happened. And you've tracked a minimum possible amount of dust into the into the habitat. I think that's awesome. I think it's fed. And well, and I'm also now realizing how true to form getting into the suits that you built 
yeah. how that process was. Because you, you needed an ounce of help. You needed a custom-built ladder yep. with a bar yep. on it. Yep. You needed an ounce of upper body strength. <laughs> it is. Humble it's, brag. And, and, and the real suits have, uh, actually, the real XCME suits have a bunch of waist support that I just didn't have time to engineer for us. I'm sorry. That's okay. You know what? All is forgiven. Because <laughs> the end product, which I, I hope we can show a little bit of again, the end product was more than more than worth it. And I say this, uh, I think I said this on, on uh, one of the tested bits. I don't know if it, it made it in, but I know I said it on, uh, G4 is going to be airing a special uh, about the process as well. And that, um, look, I had a, a, a deep respect for, for cosplay and crafting and, 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 and truly, I, 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 at least I thought I did. <laughs> and then seeing the meticulous attention to detail, all of the decisions you made, the, 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 the ring lighting in the, yeah. in the helmet, because, you know, might not be the most functional thing, but, or, or the most form thing, but how else you're going to see who's in there yep. without it. So now I'm paying attention to that when I watch well, and any number of space. It's a classic internet debate to get into yeah. of like how unrealistic the lighting inside helmets in movies are. But However, how cool is the it? only people who had no issue, well, some of the people I sent pictures to were astronauts and they were like, love the lighting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they and, get I was, it. and I was going to say, so again, I, I started off with, I think, a respect for the process, but um, I, I didn't know what I was getting into. And until I literally got into the suit yeah. on the day with the lights powered up, with the beacon flashing and i felt like we were actually in sync because i could see your beacon flashing and it was almost like there was a song and dance a modem yeah. handshake happening between the two suits and and you in that moment were the only person maybe outside of some people on your crew for testing purposes you were the only person that understood what i was experiencing right, as right, well right. and suddenly i was breathing this rarefied thankfully filtered air thank you for that as well <laughs> you built that in but i was breathing this air and i was feeling it and i was looking at the the gripped texture on the gloves and i was feeling the way the arms move and all of of the thought and the care that you put in really dawned on me was that conversion on contact moment. So I'm, yeah. I feel incredibly well, grateful to have that and, and grateful that you made that for us. So thank you. While I made them as light as possible, the suits are 35 some odd pounds each yeah. and wearing that on your shoulders for extended periods of time. Is... I'm 73 pounds and mostly porcelain. <laughs> I'm, I'm put in cornfields to scare the crows. I am, <laughs> I'm a paperclip with teeth. It was heavy. <laughs> yeah. But the end product was amazing. Yeah. And I, again, the, the, you know, the, the, our cat astronaut, our cat astronaut. Cat astronaut, yeah. D I think what was it, DJ Catastrophic? DJ Catastrophic. It's brilliant. You birthed, <laughs> you birthed the, new, the, the newest member of G4 lore moving I forward, so I thank you. I feel like you. we jumped a step. Uh, the thing to me was after you guys greenlit and building the suits, I knew that the, the, the thing I wanted to do with them was film something with them. Mm. Like build something cool, want to film something cool with it. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we made this little film, uh, The Beacon. And that was really just the tested crew. Like every time I was doing tests of the suit, when uh, jo Joey and Norm were there, I was like, let's get the cameras. Let's do some camera tests. See what lighting needs. Uh, see what the lighting needs are. I adjusted all three lights on the suit with dimmers so that we could balance them for camera. And these were only things I learned when I did it with my cameraman. And, you know, we figured out these kinks. And then we got so enamored of what it was like to shoot with the suit we had to make a short narrative and that's we came down here yeah. to la to fonco and filmed that in one day yeah yeah one very swampy day <laughs> the best I, I don't know if the behind the scenes photo has been tweeted or if it exists on social but you and i looking like moon workers half passed out like marionettes that just had their strings cut just completely <laughs> flopped totally, on the ground in these amazing totally suits. Prone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> uh, memories for a lifetime, sir. So thank you. <laughs> oh, and I hear G4 is looking to do a, a joint venture with Peacock to give the beacon five seasons and a feature. <laughs> Excellent. So who will you get to play me? <laughs> oh, that's your Someone call. Someone that's got juice. I want West, you know? I want West Chatham from the, uh, from the Expanse to play me. Okay. That's what I, I don't know if he could do it, but he's a great character actor. He could do it. We'll get him. Yeah. We'll good. get him. Does he work for sandwiches that he has to eat while working? Might. Because we, yeah, we don't respect breaks around here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, listen, the beacon was an incredible experience um, and, and I'm delighted, but I'm curious, can we take a step back? And I know you've talked about it uh, before, but um, how does an Adam Savage get forged? <laughs> How does one of those get made? Yeah. Was, what 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 parenting or lack thereof? I don't want to be presumptuous. Yeah, no, I had both. Yeah. <laughs> it was the seventies. Just enough leash. Yeah. <laughs> I, certainly. I look. I I think the most important part of my upbringing is that my parents really took pains to put in front of me those things that I expressed interest in. Mm. So if I when I. 
on I think between my junior sophomore and and between my sophomore and junior year in high school my mom signed me up for like every class at the local community center. And I just spent the whole summer like doing carving in soapstone and clay work with porcelain and like all these different processes. And now I realize what she was doing. But back then I was like, oh, this will be a cool summer. Right. You didn't get the father's foisted dreams upon you. It was, oh, you're expressing interests. Let's no. see if we can cultivate. And that's actually another thing. My parents had no preconceived notion whatsoever about how they wanted me to turn out. Any of us. And that, that is significant. When I, uh, I'm gonna just toss to commercial so I can take a second and marinate in what that reality nice. might be like. And when we come back, we'll dive a little <laughs> deeper into that, if that's all right. Absolutely. Okay, we'll be back with more with Adam Savage. This is Attack of the Show presents The Loop. We'll see you in a second. Can someone just in my IFB just go do it? Up? That's a yeah, yeah. It's an art form, Adam, and I'm not an artist. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. You probably didn't get the top half of that sentence, but that's the way this show works just now. This is Attack of the Show presents The Loop. I'm Kevin Pereira. My guest today is Adam Savage, and we are learning about the childhood uh, which made the maker. <laughs> is that fair? Sure. Uh, yeah, these questions always carry some sort of hidden thing that something was inevitable. And like life stories always look linear in retrospect sure. because they led to where you are. Uh, in reality, it is triage all the time. Uh, but I do think that you asked about uh, my parents and they definitely did not have any set goal for me, just mm -hmm. that I would be happy doing what I did. And that was something I grew up with watching my dad do. My dad was a painter first and foremost. He was a self-taught animator who did animation for a living to pay the mortgage because he could sell two IDs a year to children's television workshop to air on Sesame Street. Those little animated interstitials yeah. of circles pushing squares up hell and stuff. Those, a lot of those were made by my dad. And he'd sell two of those a year to CTW. He'd produce them in about three months out in the studio behind our house. And that would pay the mortgage for the rest of the year, during which he would spend four or five hours a day painting out in the studio. So I grew up also with this really, I consider austere example yeah. of someone who didn't show during the time I was growing up, just painted because that's what they needed to do. And like when you grow up swimming in that water, it makes you pay more attention to the things you're, you're curious about. Certainly, certainly. So now ILM, that phase, yeah. <laughs> how did you trip and fall I mean, into ILM? I saw Star Wars when I was 10. It came out when I was 10. And I had wanted to work there forever. I tried working in def several different special effects houses in New York in the 80s, and that never took, mostly because they were not easy or nice places to work. And I had the privilege of parents who paid my rent when I didn't want to work at this terrible job, which is, blows my mind, frankly. Yeah. Right? Like, from a parenting standpoint. Um, and it wasn't a small family. No, there was a bunch of people. Yeah, there was a lot of people. Um, <laughs> there was a handful of mouths. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... But it, it, let's see, I, 
I think my earliest like love was theater, I, the drama club in, mm -hmm. in grade school and high school, and then because uh, you had done some commercial stuff, right? I had done you were some in a, acting, yeah. I also in a music video. Yeah, I was in Billy Joel's music video. You're sure. only human. Yeah, his worst video, and that is a low <laughs> bar. That is a low bar. But I met Billy again a few years ago, and he was like, "Oh, what a terrible video." <laughs> oh, good. Okay, at least now it's weapons free. He gave yeah, you permission. Yeah, no, he to... was like, "We had to do it. It was the '80s. That was what you had to do." Um, but I came out to San Francisco in 1990 and started working in theaters, and I got a reputation for solving weird problems, mechanical, aesthetic problems, and that led to me working in commercial special effects. And I spent five years working on over 200 commercials. And commercial special effects is very different than normal special effects. You, you usually have like a day or two max and maybe a few hundred dollars for this thing you're building. It's The budgets are cheap, the schedules are tight. Um, and what type of, are we talking about like explosions in the background of an insurance uh, commercial no, or making like, the Pepsi pour slow? Or? Oh, the Pepsi pour slow. Actually, I, ha I had the honor of having the most popular Coke pour for about a year. Go, go on. Yeah, well, I, go I, on. I, my friend Lucy Blackwell and I art directed a Coke commercial called Coke Contraption, which is still one of the most beautiful commercials I've ever seen, let alone got to work on. We built a bunch of different Rube Goldberg contractions to deliver a Coke. And in the end, I made this joke to the client where as the Coke bottle, I had the Coke bottle sitting in a hinged basket that I soldered out of, uh, out of brass, and I wanted it to fall and pour, but I wanted it to pour slowly, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. I thought, maybe I should have a hand do it. And then, as a joke, I took a rubber kitchen glove and put a valve on it, had it <laughs> inflate like the pilot from airplane, and the Coke <laughs> bottle falls into it, and as it wilts and like <laughs> it pours the Coke, no and I'm like, they'll pilot. never go for this. And they not only went for it, but literally a year later, I got hired to pour a Coke because I was told, quote, <laughs> Coke did the research and you have the most popular pour in the last year. Of all the accolades, <laughs> I mean, of all the framed goodies and all the trophies, that's got to feel, but, that's I mean, got to feel good. Most of commercial special effects was like, no, Nike's doing uh, ACG shoes and they want a shot of a stream bed. So you've got to make a perfect looking stream bed that we can run water over with the Nike logo in stone. So you spend three days making this stone bed and you run filtered water over it while the DP shoots it and move on to the next commercial. So I did that until the late 90s. And at that point, they were ramping into heavy production on episode one. They had over 200 model makers working just in the model shop. Wow. Probably a thousand people working on the production. And I had a bunch of friends up there and I was like, it's time for me to, it's time for me to go up there. And I just sort of hammered away at the door. I was confident in my skills at that point. I didn't think I'd show up and make a fool out of myself. Mm -hmm. So I called the, the Mark Anderson, who ran the shop at the time, every week for about four months. And what I didn't know was that he had mistaken me for someone else. And so he was humoring me, but he'd shit canned my resume. <laughs> and then my friend Christine went to him and she was like, this is not the guy you think it is. Yeah. You should hire him. And he brought me in the next week and I... I spent five years there. Do you feel like that time doing commercial effects, I, I, you said you were confident in your skills on the end of that. I mean, that must be, you had 72 hours and change sometimes to turn around complex effects. Yeah. You must have leveled up your skills very quick and iterated throughout that. Yeah, ex that's exactly what that was. That was like going to college for me. Yeah. And frequently, Jamie Heineman, who was the owner of that effects shop and my boss for five years, he, the brilliant thing about him as a boss is he learned early that I was fast enough at learning stuff that it was often cheaper to teach me <laughs> than, than to, to find someone who knew how to use it. <laughs> and so when I, I've gone through these two different phases of thinking I had skills and then showing up and discovering, oh, wow, no, there are real skills. And at ILM, it did. It leveled up my aesthetic skills really hugely mm -hmm. because film work is much more about the deep aesthetics than it is about that gag getting done by today. Uh, and then, yeah, when Jamie and I moved from special effects into Mythbusters, we were like, yeah, we're effects wizards. We've got 30 years of experience yeah. under our dumb belts. And we both, uh, about two years before we wrapped the show, we were alone at the top of this fire tower chatting about this. And I was like, I, have, I had no idea how stupid I was <laughs> when we started because the skill yeah. base I've gotten in these 300 hours we've made the show is unparalleled. It is literally 10 times the amount of information that I gathered in 15 years of special effects because it's all at scale and all with totally different parameters. Yeah, it was fascinating. So then just out of you know curiosity, asking for a friend, someone who definitely isn't me, let's say you think you're skilled and you know a thing or three and then you show up to launch like a 
television network. Uh, and you think you know it because you were kind of there the first time and you realize you know nothing. You have no idea what's going on. Do you just do you just kind of fake it till you make it? Yeah. Well, you fake it till you make it. And then you look for that one thing, you know, like we were talking about this off camera. Yes. I had a young kid ask me at a con recently, what advice do you have for a young professional just starting out? And I was the thing that occurred to me to tell them was, you think at like 19 that adulthood is like, well, soon I will have a skill and then I will have knowledge right. and I'll be able to apply that knowledge to I've solve problems. I've collected all of the wisdom pearls. Yes. I have a mortgage. I guess I won. I'm an adult. And the reality is you will step into almost every project you have and it will look like a mystifying ordeal of some orgiastic fever dream of nightmarish things conflicting. And you're going to be like, I don't know what to do with this. And then at a certain point... <clears throat> If you examine it enough, you'll know something. And it might even be, well, it can't be green. <laughs> right. But that's <laughs> yeah. enough. I know that for a fact. I have a so ground truth. The this, reality here yeah. can't be green. No, this is my my advice is the second you know something, you are <laughs> you are this is the moment when I put the strobe on the suit. Right. The moment I put the strobe on the suit, a whole new point of view cascaded, like one of those letter signs from Grand Central that you used to have, like into being. And I saw much more of the narrative. And that's the trick is it's not about knowing how the thing is done. It's knowing when your point of view shows up. Mm. And adds value yeah. to the situation. And something else, I'm seeing this recurring theme as well. Like when you approach the spacesuit, you had to do a bunch of drafts because you just had to get the, the overall vision. There were a million problems to solve, but you can't solve no. the million at yeah. once. So you have to break it down. And also you, you talked in your book, uh, I believe it was in your book, you talked about like the power of a deadline. Yeah. Um, uh, about it's how so it's, powerful. it shouldn't be a crushing nightmare. It's not the ticker tape at the end of the, the parade with littered with moon dust. It's actually freeing because it focuses you. I love deadlines so much. And one of my earliest lessons in commercial special effects was uh, Jamie. Jamie's shop had been hired to do 14 gags for Toys R Us. And they were super cheap. So we had to do like 14 commercials in two days flat. 14 30 second commercials. Each one with some gag like a pen gets puppeted and dropped into a thing. And Jamie had built this complex rig for one of these commercials and it failed on the day of. And there was no resuscitating it. And I was watching, I was a brand new employee. I was like, wow, what is going to happen? And Jamie, like, emotionlessly went to the producer and he's like, this won't work. And the producer's like, what are you going to do? And Jamie's like, well, we have three options. I can redress this so it does this and the effect you want can be done in this other way. Or I can do this or I can do this third option, which will take two hours, but it'll give you five hours of shooting time. And he gave them options that encompassed all of their possible parameters and right. needs. And they were like, great, we'll go with option B. And I was like, oh my God, this is a whole new way of operating in the world. <laughs> See the crisis, but don't take it personally. Right. And then just address what can be done. And this is, look, we've both seen plenty of people step into the film industry and be like, nope. Yeah. And you either love it or you've got to get yeah, the hell out. Yeah, because option four is I'm going to go back to my car, collapse in a flop sweat, yeah, yeah and, and pretend that none of this is happening. Oh, there was an urban legend in San Francisco film community in the early 90s about a PA who had accidentally gone home with the 100-foot reel of the effects <laughs> footage. And when the producer called them, they were like, no, and they buried it in the backyard. And then the producer spent like a week tracing it back to that kid's house. And they went and they were like, where's the footage? And he like dug it out of okay, the backyard. Yeah. I totally can identify with that kid. Yeah. Option four. Oh, yeah. We've all been <laughs> we've all been option four at some point in time. Um, Vanessa, super producer Vanessa Guerrero is here. Vanessa? Yes, I am. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Hello. Um, uh, Vanessa, how are we on time, first and foremost? You've got about 20 minutes. Uh, b before the next commercial break. I ask this because I don't... I, I hate to do this to you because yeah. I, I consider you a fast friend, but we do have a hardball question. Okay. A, a hardball, Adam. Okay. Big wink and nod. We've got about three and a half, four minutes. Let's, can we do it, yeah, Vanessa? Do it. Can we yeah. do it? Yeah, we Give can do it. it. We can do it. Around these parts, Adam, we're known for asking the tough questions. Right. We're known for throwing the high heat, the real stuff. We scrape the web for the things that we wring the saddest towel out until every morsel lands in the bucket. And I say we're known for it. This is our first thing. I don't yeah. know what we're known for. We're trying to define what we're known for now. So sure. if you can just yeah. bear with me here. I got you. So I got the high heat, Adam, and I'm throwing it at you right now. Bring it it's on. coming your way. Is there a graphic, Vanessa? There was a graphic, but I was <laughs> really was bad at building it. <laughs> That's all you need to know. There was a graphic. No, she, uh, she made, she know, I know she was working on a graphic in Keynote and it was beautiful. 
It there was were... two hot dogs, a baseball. They exploded. So we'll figure it out later, and we won't <laughs> fix it in post because there is no post. But there were two hot dogs that did come oh. slamming down on the screen. Oh, this one. Great. Yeah. Yeah, let's this talk about it. This one, Adam. Let's get into it. We've got about three minutes okay. to get into it because it was asked of you, I believe on Reddit. Mm-hmm. Hot dog. Is it a sandwich? Totally. Yes it, or no? Yes. And you yes. dared to log in, not in an alt account, <laughs> but on your main. On my main. And confidently answer with no inner caps, all lowercase, which is just so, so smug, Adam. You said <laughs> yes. How is a hot dog sandwich? I, I. How is a hot dog sandwich? We're talking about the structure of a thing. Are we? Well. The thing sa- that lacks a hinge? It, the hinge is immaterial here. The hinge made without a hot dog. It's a, you just have a. You have, you have. The hinge is immaterial. The button has been made in two parts. The hinge is simply a convenience, not a structural, not structurally important. Expl- uh, no. So I think you're of not going to win me over I on think this of one. It topo- and chat is I think of it you. topologically, and topologically, a coffee cup and a donut are the same shape because they are a a, a shape with a hole through it. Okay. And a co- so thinking through like that, I break a sandwich down to the structure of bread surrounding a meat. Sure. In two slices. But the I, difference between a binder and bookends is in fact the fact that they're connected. Are you going to drop the taco on me? Sure. No. Let's do it. But the, the taco. Uh, a hot dog is a taco sandwich. No, it's not. Because the taco, taco is a single, a taco is a single monolithic piece. But if you, if you snap the taco shell in half, you got. Yeah, so if Spanish I snap sandwich. this cable in half, I have a wooden sandwich. You but sure do, but if it folded on its own, <laughs> if it folds on you'd its have own, a hot dog no, no, table. No, no, no. This science makes sense in my head. <laughs> well, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You don't hear? There's loose bolts and beans <laughs> rattling around there. Oh, I can there, hear that. <laughs> and you said cling to the one thing you know, and I know <laughs> hot dog, not a sandwich. Yeah. It's structurally a sandwich. There's a whole website, which now I'm failing to load up in real time now, but it talks about like the cubic approach to where the, uh, the what the container that holds I see, whatever sure. that it, that is defining the thing. I'm failing miserably. I just to bring think it up that right if now, aliens okay. landed and they looked yeah. at what we were eating in sure. terms of sandwichy, tacoy spaces, sure. they would make a clear distinction between a taco and a sandwich where they wouldn't with a hot dog. Uh, open face grilled cheese. That's Technic- not a sandwich. It's an open face grilled cheese. But, but no. Oh, you it's call sushi. it a grilled cheese sandwich. It's actually sushi. Sure. Okay, so we I, can agree on that. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I love a good open face grilled <laughs> cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, I, I, now we're going to just go to the wisdom of the crowd, okay, right? And yeah. in this case, the crowd that showed up for this live stream, Adam. <laughs> hot dog, sandwich, or taco. I think that's fair. I mean, a hot dog's a hot dog, but if I had to classify it, for me, hot dog, taco, not sandwich, and I'll throw it out to the studio God, as well. Hot dogs and tacos could not be more different. But they're... Th- it's the same thing. It's just one is if you're, one look, is if carnitas. The bun, if, what, if the you bun of your hot dog is a pancake, then they're the same. But it's not because the the bun has been that hinge on the bun is simply a manufacturing convenience. You break the bun, you break that hinge, you got a linguisa sandwich. Oh, really? Is that what you tell people who are eating a hot dog where the bun's been separated? I scream that in their face at the Costco. <laughs> when they spent $1.50, I break the bread and I go like, I just changed your order. Who's going to Costco like the for the hot dogs? I can do Ikea for the hot dogs. What? No, Ikea's meatballs. Adam, we were becoming friends again and now we're mortal enemies. <laughs> Ikea is meatballs and Allen wrenches. If you just got a snack on <laughs> yeah, them, d- you pop them in enough. your mouth, keep them in the pocket like a hamster. You go to Costco for the $1.50 hot dog and soda. No, I go to Ikea for the Swedish fish, really. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. We're friends again. (laughs) And chat just scrolled right now. And I can tell you out of that nonsense that is flying by so fast, we don't have the refresh rate to support it. They agree with me. Hot dog taco, not sandwich. Sorry. Sorry, Adam. And this is, you know, this is home field advantage because I I get to distill that. I I can take it. I don't mind being right. They definitely agreed with you. It's it's all right. It's fine. Uh, More from Adam Savage. When we come back, the hot dog, uh, the hot dog is taco. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my one trick pony.
Oh, I loved I'm... all those science questions, and I have rapid answers for all of them. Should, should we want to dive into that now? Yeah, if you want. We can go Q&A, or we could go rapid fire, explain like I'm, uh, explain like I'm I five. I love the explain like I'm five. Let's do it. I was surprised. You sent me a list, and I was like, wow, I actually know all of, I actually know an answer. I have an answer for every one of these. Go, yeah, I mean, we were like, let's, we'll just send too many options, <laughs> thinking that, well, let's you know, see if, we can if get 10% through make through. But okay, we're going to do that. Vanessa, you good with that? Okay, great. I'm glad. Okay, hi, welcome back. This is Attack of the Show presents the Loop. <laughs> this is a formatted show. They really? learn pretty much anything on TV these <laughs> days, we've learned. In the internet, I mean, all bets were off from the invention <laughs> of it all. Hi, friends. Uh, chat agreed with me as Adam acquiesced during the commercial break. Yes, hot dog, not sandwich, but we're moving on <laughs> because now it's time to explain like I am five. Is that what we're calling it, Vanessa? Great. That's what we're calling it. Explain like Kevin, like Kevin is, five. is five. I came up with this segment. It's not that I subscribe to the subreddit, and it's one of my favorite things. Nope, this is all me. Adam. All right. I want you all to right. know that. That's why I didn't even know if we had a graphic for it. Okay, um, so we'll pretend that there's a, a timer on the screen. Okay. We'll pretend that there's tense music. Okay. We're going to rapid fire through this. Great. I've got that five-year-old attention span, mm -hmm. okay? you got to break these complex okay. some things down to me, Adam Savage, starting with why does coffee make me awake? Oh, wow. Uh, that's actually the one I don't know. I mean, caffeine is a chemical. It crosses your blood-brain barrier and is a mild stimulant, but mm -hmm. that's the that's the most basic thing I know about. Actually, it. and we're going to stop this imaginary clock for a second because I always thought that caffeine doesn't actually make you awake. It just kind of masks the feelings of sleeping. Oh, that is, wow. That's You open with the one that I don't know. And that's all the time we have for Explain <laughs> Like I'm Five. I'm sorry. No, okay, we're going back in. All right. Why is the sky blue? The sky is blue. Well, it's improper to say why is the sky blue because sky and blue are effectively the same thing. I'm a five-year-old and I'm crying right. now. Sorry, you I just apologize. told me it's improper. No, no, so no. I'm sorry. <gasps> the sky is blue because the molecules that make up the sky reflect blue light. Oh, so the sky isn't actually blue. No, it is blue because blue light comes from things that reflect blue light. What about parabolic sound? Parabolic sound is a uh, effectively a mirror that reflects all the signals coming at it in a specific direction and allows you to magnify things far away. Is that why the car go vroom, but it sounds vroomy different later? Yeah. Is that a different thing? Uh, no, that's the Doppler. That's effect. a Doppler. That's so why does Doppler sound so vroom? Uh, that's because the sound waves, when they're coming towards you, have a certain pitch, and they're also coming at you faster because the source is coming at you faster. And then when they pass you, they're moving, and they're d the speed at which they're getting to you is slower. So and that's why car goes vroom. Exactly. The tone drops because the speed that the sound is getting to you I is know slower. why car go vroom. What about wormholes? Wormholes. Adam, what the F? Space and time are the same thing, and okay. they fold like cloth, and a wormhole is simply a cigarette burn between two folds of that cloth. Okay, I like that, actually. I'm going to accept <laughs> that. I'm going to accept that. Uh, why water sometimes go over edge of glass but no spill? Uh, well, you know when you pour water, when you, I like <laughs> you doing it, this. Which is how it was written, but that's Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just choked uh, on coffee. I wrote everything like you're five. I Adam, wanted you to be in you're here. Just yeah, no, I th thank you. Yeah. You're literally doing voice transcription for this, Why right? water sometimes go over the edge of glass, but no spill? You know when you pour water on, on the tile? And yeah. it, it, it beads up. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's beading up because of what's called surface tension. Mm. And that's the same reason it can rise slightly above the glass. because water molecules like each other and they want to stay together. And they can stay together with about as much energy as the water sticks up above the glass. <laughs> so they're literally clinging to yeah. each other, trying not they, to go over the edge They are attracted to each other, yeah. Wow. Okay, there's a... Uh, an anal analogy here with G4 talent, but I'm not going to explore that right now. I'm going to go to in outer space... Can no one really hear you scream? Nope, there, no one can hear you scream because there is no carrier for sound. Sound needs air, or it's actually, it needs some medium to travel through. So sound can travel through this table, it can travel through a swimming pool mm. or air, but in the vacuum of space, there are no molecules and thus nothing to transmit the sound. Could we fill like a box with something funny and it would make the sound different if we shouted into it? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Every different substance transmits sounds at different speeds. So the old thing in Westerns where the guy puts his ear to the ground and says, there's four horses coming, yeah, yeah. that's actually doable. Okay. Not only that, sound travels faster through rock than through air, so you can hear trains coming from much farther away by putting your ear to the track. This is, my five-year-old brain has imploded. Uh, why moon look big to my eye, but tiny in the phone? That's Vanessa, a, it's like Vanessa a lot. did me dirty if she thought this is how I talked when I was five, but thank you. That is a, a, an artifact of when you look at something with your eyes, you are like looking at it and taking it in, and it's creating a picture in your head because you're able to take time to look at it. It's a mm. bright source. Sure. So there's a lot of information coming. When you look at the photo, it's 
just the you can't it's see that, that detail because that. it's much lower resolution and it's not as bright and there's it's basically a psychological effect. Now I'm gonna as a five year old I went to many a a, a rave. Yeah, sure. I love Dead Mal Five when I was five and I want to know how do glow sticks work? Uh, it's a chemical reaction and two chemicals that when you join them together, glow stick has a glass ampule yeah, in you it full of a second chemical. When you break it, you mix those chemicals and part of their chemical reaction uh, is they, every chemical reaction is about the movement of energy and the energy generated by that chemical reaction is light. Ah, now what about, now sometimes I've been told you can put them in the freezer and then when it's in the morning and you've switched over to more edibles or something else to just kind of edge off the roll, you could take the glow sticks out of the freezer and recrack them. Really? That's what I was told. That sounds like... That, yeah. I don't believe that. Well, and I wouldn't trust anybody's uh, uh, <laughs> role experience. I wouldn't trust anybody who said that there was more light there. Who put these glow sticks in the freezer? <laughs> the internet! <laughs> no, no, it's cool, man. Just <laughs> stop knocking over the solo cups. Why is my microwave burrito molten outside, but still kind of frozen on the inside? Um, because it takes a while to move heat through a, 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 a cohesive body. You, you, the microwaves work by taking a, the electromagnetic spectrum at a specific frequency and vibrating the molecules of your sandwich or your hot dog. And they vibrate it, start, so the, and vibrating makes them heat up. Well, it doesn't make them heat up, it makes heat. Vibration is heat. Right. So the microwaves create heat, and that heat takes a while to work its way all the way into the center of your lasagna. I'm blowing my mind here. Why, why should Kevin close the toilet seat when Kevin flush? <laughs> uh, because if you could witness microscopic droplets of water... Has anybody you, visualized that, the... The effect? We we tried on the show. We found we found artifacts from a flush toilet as far as 15 feet away. No. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. In a completely cleaned bathroom. So it, water vaporizes and stuff travels. Yeah. And look, it's all in our gut biome anyway. We're inhaling fecal coliform and all sorts of nasty stuff all the time. It's what makes us robust. <laughs> Five-year-old me does not want to hear that. <laughs> Five-year-old, you ate poop. I am sure yeah, oh, of it. Yeah, 100%. 25 and 35. Five-year-old me also has some questionable <laughs> dietary habits. Why does menthol feel cold? Oh, this one's really neat. It turns out that the chemical in menthol, it, when we get cold, our cells have a chemical reaction to getting cold. Our human cells have a chemical reaction. Menthol activates that same enzyme that's activated when we're cold. So it's like the the menthol is faking you into thinking. I was going to say, so it's not the actual compound itself. No. It's it's the compound itself is activating some part of your system that tells you when stuff is cold. <laughs> so it's basically a man in the middle attack. Yes. Can we, okay, <laughs> hold on the explain like I'm five. Like, did, did, did you ever do any hacking or freaking, which no. is basically like phone based, you know? No, I did, uh, sorry, I, uh, no, I did do hacking in the original. Statute of limitations. No, in the original well MIT passed. sense of the word of exploring places I shouldn't go and ah. leaving them as I found them, I did a ton of that in my teen years. With computer systems? No, or no, 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 more no. With... all physically. So oh, I yeah. found out that a butter knife could pick the locks on the doors <laughs> that led to the windows in Grand Central Station's big windows, east and west. And I spent much of my, the 80s, one wandering through those windows and I've even one day they left another door unlocked and I discovered that it's true there is a swimming pool above the 42nd no. street waiting room an old health club was up there and at least when I was there in the late 80s there was still the remnants of a dried out swimming pool up there that's incredible yeah but you never built like a beige box and whistled tones into something to make free no. international calls I read about those guys because yeah. uh, uh, that's Captain like Crunch and was golden era of yeah, hacking right? totally totally um, I read about them, but I never did it. I, I, I choked a little bit on this one because it says, how do crowbars work? And why do they make me so strong? <laughs> uh, it's uh, the simple lever effect. Uh, Archimedes has one of my favorite physics quotes, which is, uh, give me a lever and a place to stand and I can move the world. And mm. it is really true. The amount of energy you can impart with a crowbar is gargantuan, especially when you're out at the end of a lever arm. Kids, you're learning a lot. You're we're teaching five-year-olds some questionable things. Yeah, exactly. Jam butter knives into everything. <laughs> Just, you know, Grand Central locks or light sockets. Just and grab keep, a crowbar. Look, if you're going to make friends with the light socket, just make sure one hand's in your pocket. That's all. And as a seasoned TV professional, how do I toss the break right now? <laughs> I think you just did. Oh, great. We'll be back then. <laughs> that was awesome. That's great. Thank you. Um, I had never thought...
Hello there, dearest internet and television friends. Hi there, Kevin Pereira back for Attack of the Show Presents The Loop, our inaugural episode. And what better champagne bottle to crack against the bow than Sir Adam Savage? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for making me a knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, listen, I teased at the top of the show that we are, in fact, live and interactive. And that's the way media works these days, I'm told. So we are going to ask some of the cues from the audience. Okay. That's fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I might have skipped a graphics cue. And the good thing is that... That's okay? Let's roll sure. it. Sure. <clears> that <throat> great. Literally forgot the name of the segment as we were going to it. And it's like, you know what? We're all friends here, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Ask questions. We have answers. Let's answer them. And that's the segment. And that's what we're in right now. Thank you, Vanessa. So my unexpected treasure asks Adam, if you were a supervillain, how would you use Regolith in the most evil way? Oh, I would I would Little figure out a way to make sprinkle. white regolith so you oh. couldn't see it, and then I'd sprinkle it in the clothing factories of my enemies. <laughs> Their clothes would just start falling apart on them. They wouldn't know. <laughs> Have you? Is there like a? That's literally the nude bomb. I just described the Get Smart movie plot line. <laughs> That works, though. It's yours now because yeah. it's Regolith, Amazing. and that's the unexpected twist. Um, C. Lloyd, what's up, C. Lloyd? 007 asks, I sip on my bourbon while listening. I'd like to know, what is your adult beverage of choice? I, uh, I don't drink alcohol. Okay. Uh, and uh, my favorite drink of choice is Bundaberg Diet Ginger Beer. Go, go, go on. That's it. I drink probably about three a night. Uh, it is my favorite drink. Bundaberg is an amazing ginger beer. It settles my stomach. It feels great and super delicious. It's literally, it's my main shop drink. It used to be Snapple Peach Iced Tea, oh, which I know there. a lot of people think is just the worst flavor no, no, ever. No, 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 no. Been I love there. It. Been there lovingly. But there's so much caffeine in that. Yeah. I realized that I can't drink one after noon. But when I hear three or four ginger beers to cap an evening, I think about the sugar content. Of oh, that. yeah. No, is it's there... diet ginger beer. So, the, so, so you're just fine. Like, yeah, it's very low, low sugar content. Now, is it? Okay. Not a question that was submitted by yeah. chat, but I'll fake it. Not Kevin Pereira asks, artificial sugars, I've heard they're just as bad for you yeah. as the regular thing. I've heard that too. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Yeah. That's the perfect answer. <laughs> K-Boy asks, any plans to go to space soon? Oh, God, yes. I would love to go to space. I'd love to be a civilian ambassador to space. If you've got a seat on one of your You want ships, me to text Jeff? <laughs> You want me to text Jeffy? Because I'll do it right now. I, you know, I, I, it, it's very exciting time that space is becoming more accessible. The fact that we can, it, it, you can look down the barrel of a lens and say, hey, I'd really like to go to space on one of your ships. And that could apply to, to a whole host of different several entities. Several yeah. private entities Absolutely. is really exciting. Look, I'll make my own suit. That's right. You yeah. <laughs> and you could probably fix the toilet on Elon's. I would, <laughs> I would, I would love to go. I've been on the vomit comet. Yeah, I've we were just talking the, about the, that. Yeah, two spy plane to seventy thousand feet and above, and th that vantage point on the universe. It's something I would really yeah. like to experience at some point in my life. I found on the, the zero G flight, the parabolic flight, I found the moon and Martian gravity to be the best part of the experience. The zero gravity part of it all, <laughs> nauseating. I felt completely helpless. Yeah. I was doing the yeah. Galapagos yeah. turtle thing that they said I would. And I'm like, no, I'm too smart for that. And then suddenly I'm a scared cat that just saw a cucumber and can't get away. I like the moon gravity. Yeah. I like doing push-ups with pinkies. I loved the fact that as I tried to move quickly in moon gravity, I looked precisely like an Apollo yes. astronaut. Yeah. Like the, that the, the weird two-legged skip. I also thought it was hilarious. I, I finished doing all of the, I guess it took us like nine or ten parabolas to get all of our sequences. Yeah. And then my producer's like, we're good. We're wrapped. And of course, that's when I throw up. And I throw up into the doggy bag or whatever they call it. Yeah. Not a doggy bag. And I throw up and I'm like, Oh, and I look down and I realize, oh, there's nothing holding it in the bag because there's no gravity. Maybe I should Did shut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it went down and it came back up to greet me. And now it's coming back up again to greet me. Wait, the bag is momentum vomiting. momentum is yes. getting it into this bag, not gravity. Yes. And momentum is going to bring it back out if I don't act quickly. So I What close. a fun discovery. <laughs> uh, Kiro and Gib asks, which do you think will come first, moon base or Mars base. Oh, moon base, 100%. Right, that's, it has to. There's fuel on the moon. Right. We, we're going to get to Mars. The hardest part of getting to Mars is getting enough fuel out of Earth's gravity well. 
and the moon has a ton of water on it, and that is our rocket fuel right there. All we need to do is use electricity to turn it into some hydrogen and oxygen, and we're off to the races. Love it. We have uh, two more if you have time. Okay. Uh, TF98 asks, what's the build that holds the most sentimental value to you? The most sentimental value. Yeah. That's... Do you ever get misty-eyed reminiscing on a particular build? Yeah, I yeah. do. Um, when, I was, when I was five years old in 1972, I snuck out to my dad's studio, and I took my teddy bear, and I traced him on a piece of paper, and then I drew him, and I gave him all the things I wanted, which was a nice snazzy blue vest, a uh, belt and uh, uh, with a gold buckle, and a Superman shirt. And my parents saved it and framed it and dated it which tells you a lot about my parents yeah. and I still have it. I, every bone in my host body says you end on that. <laughs> it does because that's, I mean, that's delightful. That is very sweet, but I am going to end with All right. King Hova studios who asks, okay. Can I get that recipe for thermite you wouldn't share on Mythbusters? Asking for a friend. <laughs> get your own anarchist, anarchist cookbook. Did I miss I'm my out? I'm not going to do your homework for you. <laughs> I missed my out. Damn oh, it. yeah. No, here it is. It's um, uh, G-O-O-G-L-E. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we have a promo pony. I don't know if you've heard about this thing. It is a majestic creature. Okay. No saddle. Refuses, <laughs> refuses it. Um, but once you hop upon it, you have to ride it into the sunset. Okay. Are you ready to ride the promo pony? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I started to set it up, I was regretting it. <laughs> there, I could have just said, hey, no, we've reached a... that, that time in the show where we should plug a few things or whatnot. But I'm yes and. I'm just, you I know. know I know, sure but that's a dangerous into... place, and it's too yeah. much power into my amateur mitts. <laughs> uh, you're very kind and very gracious. But let's, let's go ahead and let that horsey dance across the screen, friends. Oh, it's oh, time oh, to oh, ride. Oh, oh, oh. A promo pony. Get yourself to tested.com and see some of our videos and our short film for G4. Wait, hold on. No, I should have just. <laughs> oh, I'm mean, not is that? I thought I was supposed to talk I, the whole time. I know, but the pony is so fast in case you didn't realize that. Yeah, he no, I was, I was very screen. grateful how fast he was. Oh, okay. And he was he was majestic with his gait. And you were also in, like embodying that MIDI music, that barnyard theme that was there. Like, hey, friends, come on out, which I appreciate. But. Th that we can be, we can okay, be a good. little more oh, casual. With the yeah, let's Lovely. be. Lovely. I should have, I should have. <laughs> So we're going to take it back for the edit, and uh, let's let that promo pony run across the screen right now. And there, oh, how fun is that? He is majestic. And that's all the time you have. That's all the time you have. Oh, oh no. Tested.com. No, look, I, I know, I, I knew uh, uh, once once you came involved, uh, become, became involved with the G4 of it all, and from the suit build to agreeing to do this, which I appreciate. Like, I mean, I, obviously, I knew uh, you'd have a home here, obviously. Not that you need a second, third, or fourth home, but uh, the reaction from chat was insane, and as predicted, they're going to want to see more. They're Good. going to want more. Yes, they could Google. Of course, there's the let me Google that for you link, but... How can people find more? Uh, they can find more at Tested, uh, our YouTube channel, which is Tested.com and Tested on YouTube. Um, there are literally hundreds of hours of me building stuff in my cave in San Francisco, collaborating with amazing people like the the geniuses at Weta Workshop and traveling to film sets like Blade Runner 2049 and most recently Ghostbusters Afterlife, where yes. I was actually able to even build some props for the show. Yeah, Tested.com. We've been having a lot of fun over there. And your private social? <laughs> What's the... No, you're only going to get the main. Okay. No burner phone? You want to... <laughs> even a Google Voice or something? I wish. Leave it? Oh, my God. Okay, so I just funded this Kickstarter for a cell phone that has a physical mechanical dial on it. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a cellular device with a rotary dial. A rotary dialing cell phone. Yeah. So they're going analog to yep. digital somehow, I, I, and I, this I, is something you... You have I to have, have to have in my course. collection. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're, Adam, uh, thank you. Again, you've been gracious with your time. The build was incredible. I, I truly, it was a, an honor and a privilege oh. to be part of that journey with you. Thank you. You guys were amazing partners in that suits, man. That thank was you. such a fun build. Thank you. Five seasons and a, and a feature. We're going to get it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Ladies and gentlemen, you stay right there. Uh, I'm going to wrap Adam Savage out of here, and we're going to hang out with more of your Q and your A when we come back to Attack of the Show Presents The Loop. Thank you, sir. Dude, that was awesome.
booming. It is deafening, deafening. in in-ear monitors because yeah, yeah, yeah. you just Big isolate time. all the sound. I've got. Uh, hi everybody, welcome back. It's me, KP. Vanessa Guerrero is here. Hey. I always. Yeah. Guerrero. Yeah. But I just, it's, I want to say it right because I said yeah. it wrong once and now it, it fills me with a flop sweat. I did during, uh, we were like testing the streams out in the old, and I said, I, I, I made the comment that whenever I tell Siri to text yeah. you, I always try to, I always say it differently oh, every time. Oh, she can't get my name right. No, she does no, no, not. No, no, no. And it's like sending a text to Vanessa Guerrero. Guerrero. I'm like, no, that's, that's not yeah. at all. She no, needs... we both have last names that robots can't figure out. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. Anytime yeah. I try and like text you, Siri is just like texting Kevin. Peria. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, she sounds like she doesn't trust my name. She doesn't. I feel like it's going to give me a layer of protection from Skynet, though, so I'm okay with that. If the Terminator can't pronounce my name, it's going to yeah. be hard for him to find me. John Connor, really easy for the AI. Exactly. They Herrera? won't find us until we like, die trying to fight a robot. Um, Vanessa, welcome. Everybody, welcome Hi. Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa's hello. the super producer. Thank you. I made the hot dog graphic. I know. We, didn't, we will play that hot. We're going to have to find a reason to play hot dog hardball with yeah, another yeah. guest, and we will shoehorn it in we'll yeah. find a way to talk We're about gonna hot make dogs every guest tell us if a hot dog, hot dog is, is a sandwich, a sandwich. Or not. it's not a sandwich it's not and i got a little flustered with it because it was you think it's a sandwich i don't think it's a sandwich thank you it's not it's absolutely not the the the, the bread here in this case is a sleeve which is carrying the material you're gonna eat you cut that in half you have yeah. a sandwich now but See, when you tether it when you connect the two it's a completely different meal it's a completely different meal although i think the way you categorize it also comes into play uh, I have my debates over it because I also know that hot dog predates sandwich, which mm. is also why it can't be a sandwich because I believe hot dog first became a thing in like the 14th, 15th century. Right. And sandwich wasn't really a thing until the 18th. And this is like the Oreo Hydrox thing. Exactly. Like Hydrox is the OG Oreo, but now you would say a Hydrox is an Oreo. Not true. Not true. Hot dog, the original hot dog. And the sandwich, sandwich, as we know, it wasn't really a thing until sliced bread was more of an advent in like the 20th century. And here's so. what I do, friends. I pick up and obsess over a piece of any sentence that someone says. And, and you happen yeah. to say just seconds ago, I have debates about this. And that's Slightly. really telling about you and the company you keep, Vanessa, yeah. because I believe you've had numerous debates about whether hot dog sandwich. Because of that, I actually in my head have the USDA percentages to <laughs> what a sandwich is like off the dome. Of course you do. Like 35% cooked meat in order to be categorized as a sandwich in terms of how much bread there is. And then in order to be an open face sandwich, it has to be 50% cooked meat to 50% mm. bread. I, where were, you were literally here. Yep. During the Adam Savage argument. I didn't want to throw my hat into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to all of a sudden realize that all of my like math and equations as to like why a hot dog was a sandwich was all for uh, not. Dine TV asks a very important question. What about vegetable sandwiches? See, that's the other thing. The USDA says cooked meat in order to make it, but like, is a comparison well, sandwich the, not a they're sandwich? They're in the pocket of big beef. Is a Everybody grilled knows cheese that. not a sandwich? It is a sandwich. Exactly. But a hot dog... It's not a sandwich. No. So friends, um, thank you for joining here and, and helping put all this on the rail. A huge I thank know. you to our studio crew and everybody You're in amazing. the control rooms and all the people throughout the building. Pretty much everybody at this new G4, we're, we're making it up as we go along and we're doing yep. a damn fine job considering. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Adam's philosophy on deadlines really rings true when yeah. it's like, you know, we had a launch date hovering mm -hmm. and that caused a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt, a lot of panic. Yep. But man, did it help us find signal in the noise of like, mm -hmm. hey, we're planting a flag. It might be in quicksand, but we're but planting the damn flag. Yep. And we certainly did. So kudos to everybody and to the audience. Thank you for tuning in and bearing with us as we <laughs> figure out what the heck we're doing. The <laughs> amount of eye screaming that we've all done collectively, like over mass, just like just so loud with the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah we're getting it. Yeah. We're getting it. So, so chat, thank you for hanging out. I also uh, saw a couple people subscribe uh, during this thing, which is, I think, I don't know, you, I don't think you on YouTube, you got to smash the sub button. That yeah. costs you nothing over there, as far no. as I'm concerned, right? No, cost click, you nothing. Kick, drop kick the bell until it hurts your digits. Give it the people's elbow. Yeah, just. Give it another sweet science. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but on the Twitch side, I think people were subbing as well. And I don't know how this works, if we're supposed to shout that out or how that works. But I just want to say that I did see that. And I appreciate that. So thank you. People are now gifting subs as well. So Keeps us alive. All of that is precious nectar. It's the mana that we need. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, we, um, uh, spoiler, uh, we did pre-tape an episode of this uh, yep. today, which is going to air next week. Because next week, because of the holidays and this, that, the other, uh, your boy... Gonna be in an RV oh. in the middle of nowhere, 
celebrating with some family and some mm -hmm. friends. And also because of the launch week and all this madness here, everybody's just taking a bit of a break as we roll into the holiday and whatnot. Um, but um, I don't know if it's on the dial yet. I'm going to I'm going to spoil it. Dr. Adam Sessler is the guest for next week. He's the guest for next week. Uh, what He's a amazing. Get. He what so a fun. get. Impossible to track him? down. Oh, years of phone calls and work? harassing and haranguing. I don't know. He's on some internet thing. I the point is, we're going to have a nice long conversation with him. What was that you started to say? Oh, no. I was just going to throw it in aside. I have to say, uh, it's entirely your fault that I kind of want an RV now. Oh, good. Yep. Good. I will happily take the blame for that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm legitimately in my head thinking about, like, how much I have to save up to make it happen within the next five years. I say this often, and I'll say it again, because, uh, as Adam said, you cling to the one thing that you know. Yeah. Right? Um, when I tell people that I live in an RV, which I, and I now have a place that I'm renting because of all of this. Yeah. Um, but I chose to do that. I'm not a victim of circumstance. This was a choice. It was a lifestyle change in preference. And I got to tell you, I, I miss it. Yeah. I miss it every day. I when can't I, imagine. When I have to change my uh, Discord backdrop to be something mm -hmm. different, and I can't just drive my home someplace so the backdrop is different, mm. that's a sad time for me. That's a sad time. That's a sad time for me. Yeah, I stayed in an RV because of you, and now I'm addicted. Oh, you actually did it? Yep. When did, well, did, let me know. What was it? Uh, I went to Joshua Tree like a few months ago, mm -hmm. stayed, uh, I rented an old Airstream. Oh, uh, the I little know. metallic burritos. Uh, mwah, 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 so perfect. Like, there's truly nothing like opening the blinds and seeing just desert yeah. for as far as the eye can see. Uh, the only thing is I drove in at night, got lost, and didn't know there was horses in the area. <laughs> uh, and if you don't know there's a horse, but you hear horse sounds at night, your yeah. brain thinks demons. Sure. So yeah. <laughs> this airstream's possessed. I should have checked for chalk outlines or blood splatter. I'm gonna die. This is the hills have eyes, yeah. and like, cause like, it's not even just the regular horse whinny sound. It's like that exhale sound, mm -hmm. that terrifying yeah. thing that horses do. That and somehow you hear your name in it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like it knows my name. It knows the time I'm gonna die. What the hell? Someone check the awning. <laughs> what is going on out there? Now the airstream, timeless. Timeless. Wonderful design. Beautiful yep. little space burrito, as yep. we know. No slide outs. Nope, none. No slide outs. Yeah. Huge flaw. I know that's to, yeah. for aerodynamics and weight and this, that, the other. But when you have the luxury of parking in the middle of somewhere, anywhere, probably Big surrounded desert. by murderous horses, yep. and you push the button and your little burrito opens up to be a hot dog. Just a house. Not hot dog sandwich, Not but hot, hot dog. dog. Hot dog, Big hot dog. full hot dog. Yeah, you get a lot of extra space. So if you're going to consider, yep. I don't know, are you more going to, are you going to go like hashtag van life where it's like a small sprinter van? Are you going to go full motor coach? Are you going to go trailer that you tow behind? Fifth wheel that hitches up over the truck bed? There's so many options that we can explore for hours, but we only have minutes, but no, please tell me. I was thinking go. trailer tow behind. Yeah, I'm, it's a great place to I'm start. I'm scared of driving an RV. Just, it feels like too much. Yeah. vehicle for me to drive truck with thing towing behind it that mm -hmm. feels more manageable i have fully had several panic attacks trying to move a u-haul out of oh. a parking lot oh, okay. so maybe like full rv isn't oddly for enough me. Uh, we rented a u-haul to practice because before my my wife and i got the first trailer we had never towed anything yeah and so we're like we should probably get a little u-haul something mm -hmm. that we can go into a costco parking lot at midnight yeah and all around and we did just practice tight turns and towing that was way more difficult oh, than towing no. the 20 no 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 the, way easier to tow the trailer okay. it's way easier to tow a trailer or a fifth wheel which some of it hangs over your truck bed it's actually yeah. easier I can That's explain comforting. the physics of it, not as well as Adam Savage could. Can we I'll explain back to you. To, like, explain our I'll to explain me? it to you during this okay. commercial right break, now. and when we come back, I promise you're going to get into a 35 footer, something nice and, nice and classy, very tasteful. We'll be right back, Internet, and we'll chat with you. I promise. I just stay right there. I
How do we feel about the song, chat? Because uh, yeah. uh, Universal uh, Music Library, if I may, it slaps. That's a banger. Yeah. That's one I want as my ringtone so I can just have friends call me on the way home. Because I don't know how to operate Spotify on the Apple CarPlay. I got to set a ringtone and then call me. And I've had the same ringtone for like six years because I forgot how to put like a new one on. What do you got? Uh, I think it's an Erica Badu song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's just, just, just center me and remind me I'm alive anytime I get a phone call. And then I talk to someone and I'm scared again. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call you and just make horse noises <laughs> at 2 a.m. <laughs> Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is, in fact, the final block. This is the final this countdown. Is this is where we put this inaugural stream to rest. To bed. How do you think? We lived. How do you think we did? And this is an all play. Studio can shout. Yeah. You're welcome to join chat. I especially want to hear from you. What would you like more of? What would you like less of? Can't say me, because I'm fragile. He needs this. <laughs> Give Kevin compliments. I'm still insecure. Someone say more Kevin. Uh, more me is good. Ah. More Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, it was yep. almost unanimous, except it was only like one person. <laughs> More Kevin. Reading You're like, put the ball on the insecure tee, and they just yeah. kicked the whole thing over. Didn't even swing at it. <laughs> Screw like you. Saying, we're playing soccer. It's like saying, please don't pick me last for dodgeball, <laughs> and then they immediately pick you last. <laughs> No, Dirty. sincerely, listen, this whole operation is a is a work in progress. We are building the, yep. the plane as we're flying it, which mm -hmm. is an expression that someone used recently, and now it's all we can use around here. So. Me one time, like six months ago, I just want to say, I was the one that said it first, and now it's just going around like wildfire, you and it's it? because it was an improv term, and I haven't actually told anybody that. Vanessa? Yep. You know what? You don't get enough credit. Thank you. And so, friends, that's why I like to say we are building this plane as we are flying it. We don't know what the destination is. Nope. We're not quite sure how physics work, but you are going to be an integral part of this process. So if at any point, um, actually not at any point, because, again, I'm easily distracted and very fragile. But if you have constructive criticism or feedback, we have a Discord. You can go on in there and, and paste it. I mean, you could say it in chat right now, but it's going to scroll by so fast because people are putting in their opinions on burritos and whether or not hot dogs are tacos. It's going to be tough, but who, one of our mods, mwah, kisses, blesses. They just had the link to the G4 Discord right there in chat, so you can go and Amazing. visit. And please leave feedback there because I, I troll often. I don't engage all the time uh, because, again, delicate, yeah. very thin skin. Yep. I see what they're saying. Got to protect your energy. I wish I was Kasim too. Let's just get that out of the way. But I'm not. I'd have to wake up and live each and every day knowing I'm not him. No. I wish I were. No, and that's devastating. I know you do. I've seen slack over your I know. shoulder. You've seen that look in my eyes when I realize I'm not Kasim and I have to go yet another second breathing oxygen, not as Kasim G. That's right. Yep. So we all get that. That feedback aside, really, we, we want to know what you want more of, what you want less of. Uh, but about that banger track, because I had to go scraping through the Universal Music Library to try to find something. And I know yeah. it's like when you hear the same track over and over again, and when that track is signifying an ad break, it's sort yeah. of like setting your favorite song to be your wake-up alarm. Three weeks into it, hate it, yeah, I'm throwing that phone yep. across the room. Sorry, dear Hunter. So, did the track slap? That's all I want to know. This is simple. One's in chat if it slaps. Two if it's a banger. Three if it's a, a zoot riot. Four if it's... Not as good as the promo pony song. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And I'm seeing someone put 13 in chat. I don't know oh, how that hedges the bets, but that's fine. This is the worst way to do a poll. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is chaos. Just like blindly and then just asking Absolute random chaos. Uh, questions. Um, so I think we should um, also talk about some of the guests that we have booked for upcoming loops. Yes. You start. We have <laughs> some people. Mm-hmm. They're interesting. Oh, my word, are they? They're so passionate about what they do and how they do it. When you think, and that's the, that's the key right there. It's not just about what they do, okay? Because yeah. pe people are into a lot of different that things. That could be anyone. Right? Yeah, and you could be so yep. vague, that could have been a barn, right? What yeah. they do, store animals. Store animals. What they do, talk to them. Got some hay. That's a barn. Yeah. That's not a loop guess. What Vanessa said is yep. it's about how they do it. And wow. the way these guests that we have coming up, how they do. And how into it they are. Oh, man. And I know that that just gave a lot away. Yeah. And I would prefer you not spoil it in chat, but someone, uh, the, the guesses are coming in right now. I do want to get us a ghost hunter at some point. Go on. 
I don't know. I, I've just always wanted to interact with one. I did uh, a show. I did a show with a ghost hunter, an episode of a show. It was mm -hmm. a show called Super Into, where you explore, uh, you know, uh, celebrity obsessions. OK. Um, and we went into a, a haunted mansion in the middle of New Jersey. And I had the almost like divining rods. I think it's how uh, people find water. Oh, yeah. The, you, the I would hold two these, little sticks and then they turn. Yeah, they were me metallic kind and of like elbow. A, yeah. And I had to hold them and we had to go through this house while someone was like using an old Sony like yeah. mini disc recorder because it could pick up the frequency. Mm -hmm. Not because it didn't induce noise into things because it was a very lossy format. Yeah. And we were going around. Yeah, the, the, they were the, they were like dousing rods. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. Uh, and someone guessed the rock. Yeah. We have to. The invite is out to Dwayne. Yeah. Dwayne, And that's it's a safe on way you. to say it for everybody, right? Hey, guys, the invite's out. We're going to do it uh, the way... Oh, my God. Why do I always forget the name of the other bald man? <laughs> Adam Sessler? Thank you, Vin Diesel. Oh, I'm right. So <laughs> <laughs> I he's the only bald guy's name. He's the only other bald man in my life. Yeah. And we got him. He's the main bald man yeah. in our lives. Uh, he's the big bald. Yeah. No, we'll Vin Diesel it. We'll put, oh, like, yeah. a long, like... It's on you now. Ball's in your court, Dwayne. We'll be heartbroken if you don't do it, Dwayne. Yeah, so that yeah. was, that, this is, a, you're re referring to his Instagram yep. sort of make good, his digital yep. uh, olive branch. His work, uh, I don't know if I'd call it an olive well, branch. Well, I don't even know what, I saw the headline of it, and in true fashion, I think I know what it is because I half read a headline. So what, I'll finish the ghost hunting story on another loop. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I, this is way more interesting, okay. but I promise I'll finish that story. Just put it in the queue and chat, remind me next loop chat. Yep. Finish the ghost hunting story because it's got a payoff that is worth the tease. And maybe we'll be talking to a ghost hunter. When we so do what it happened now. with Vin Diesel? Because um, so I know he was he was a nightmare to the Rock on the Fast and yes. Furious set, notoriously. Notoriously, um, he did one of those that it's not so much like an apology or an olive branch. It's like when someone says sorry in front of all of your friends, it's like a proposal that somebody is tricking you into, <laughs> where it's like there's a lot of people watching. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna say yes in this mall? Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah. marry me or not. Right. Uh, but it was that with a franchise. Yeah. You're going to make was, this Toontown yeah. very sad if you yep. walk away from my Dippin' Dots and Churro and wedding ring. Exactly. So now it's on you. Except Vin Diesel did that with The Rock. As someone said in chat, the bald's in your court. The <laughs> Brilliant. Amazing. I mean, we'll Vin never, no. we're never going to compete with the internet, so we might as no. well collaborate. I'm sorry I didn't catch your username. I was laughing too hard at the balds in your yeah, court. Yeah, just spam it until we figure out your name again. <laughs> so, so, but was it an actual, I'm sorry that I mistreated you, or was it a, hey, look. Oh, there's not a single apology uh, we'll in family. it. Yeah, it was, it was like, I'm sorry that you feel like you can't come back, but you should. It was very much like that. There's oh. no actual like apology So it has nothing actions. to do with my actions and ownership. It yep. has everything to do with your feelings and your takeaway and your actions. The tone was the family will not write again without you. Uh, <laughs> so it, it was very much just like, there's a lot of jobs on the line, Dwayne. Yeah. There's a hey, lot Dwayne. Of yeah. Turns yeah, yeah. out you're the draw. Yep. Yeah. Turns out, even though that Baldwin Hills Theater, when I went to go see the most recent Fast, Fast and Furious, was actually pretty full. Was it ironically full? Like No. Okay. Not the Baldwin Hills Theater. No? Not ironically full. Everyone there is there because they ride with the family. <laughs> they live their lives a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. I'm sorry. I I'm asked. not kidding. This literal theater gasped and went, oh, the Coronas are back in, like, in the middle of the movie. Like, they were thrilled. I mean, I was too. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Too. Okay. That, that, yeah. And that's a lot of leeway. We'll have yeah, a lot yeah. of leeway. Um, we are, in fact... Out of time, Vanessa. We're out of time. We, we ate up all the time. It. We ate up some Amazing. time. Amazing. Well, I think uh, Golden Boy and was it Austin Creed earlier? It is. Yeah, they they are the champions. They are the all time yeah, time yeah. eating champions. They are the kings <laughs> of stretch. The goats. The stretch all goats. All time. Um, so stretch we thank goat. them. Um, uh, honestly, uh, all all of you in in Twitch chat and on the YouTubes and then uh, maybe on Linear, maybe you're uh, typing something into a word processor to try to interact on that medium. I don't know. Point is, thank you for showing up. We sincerely appreciate it. Last night was an absolute blast. This journey is only beginning, and it's a privilege uh, to take it with all of you. So thank you so much. I hope to see you in the Discord. I'll see you on the Reddit. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank, thank you to you. our amazing crew. Congrats on day two of 100. Spoiler, that's all we got. So yeah. enjoy them while they last. I'm Kevin Pereira. Kisses, hugs, belly rubs. Goodbye.